Hey yo, what's up you too? Welcome back to another one of my videos. And I don't know, I'm Glenn and I'm back again with another video for you guys. Welcome on guys, I hope everybody is okay. Today I'm gonna make a video about how I knew that I was a transgender. <laughs> Interesting, ain't it? Alright, so before I get into that though, I want to make two shout outs to two new trans um, men that I met on YouTube. Right, they're really cool, love them style, them swag, their flavor, and they're upcoming trans men like myself. So it feels good to know that I'm not alone out here in this world. <laughs> right, and I mean, you got thousands of famous trans men on YouTube right now, but I guess we're the upcoming generation, right? But I really wanted to shout them out because I came across their YouTube channel upon doing some research and I really thought that they were dope and their content was dope so I'm gonna put their YouTube name down here at the bottom right here so that you guys can see one of them is Zach Spikey the punk rock trans guy <laughs> he's really awesome uh, I think he's Irish are you are you Irish right that's awesome or or from Scotland which one is it I'm not sure bro but Love the accent and he is awesome. His style and his flavor and his content is awesome. So guys, please go ahead and subscribe to Zach Spikey's channel. You won't regret it. The other YouTuber that I want to give a shout out to, his name is Chiron Said. Did I say that correctly? I hope I said it correctly, but there is his YouTube name down there at the bottom. Go ahead and subscribe to his channel, guys. Like I said, and ladies, Chiron, I fool on a dime. <laughs> you get what I mean? So go ahead. You guys gonna have fun just watching him talk. That's it. <laughs> right? So just go ahead and subscribe. His content is awesome. His flavor, his style, he's Jamaican slash Dominican. So that's a good mixture, don't you guys think? <laughs> right? Subscribe to Chiron. I hope I said that right. Once again, big up on yourself, guys. I really love you guys' content. It's really good to know that, you know, I'm not the only trans man out there on a rising. You hear what I mean? So, other thing, guys, I'm gonna see how my look wet. <laughs> Just bleach out my hair again. Yes, again, because my hair, that black, that Negro, <laughs> it's really strong. That nanny of the maroon shit. Yeah, it's really strong. So, my hair grows fast, and the black was just taking over. I had to start over the process again so i could drop in my secret color i'm not gonna tell you guys right <laughs> it's for my birthday but so tomorrow i'm gonna dye my hair um and tomorrow i'm gonna have a little celebration i'm gonna vlog that for you guys as well yeah i'm gonna vlog my celebration for you guys so you guys can see i posted it on instagram to see you know who would want me to vlog if you guys would want to see and a couple people said no i mean how can you tell a youtuber not to vlog it's like telling me not to make money or not to go to work you get what i'm saying <laughs> but it's not even that serious guys i'm y'all ain't gonna you know, see half of the fun that i'm gonna have <laughs> i'm just gonna give me a little piece <laughs> not too much right guys yeah so i'm gonna vlog that and um yeah my birthday's on Monday, guys, don't forget. Um, birthday wishes are fine, you know what I'm saying? I know it's the pandemic, I'm not looking out for any presents. So yeah, I hope to see birthday wishes and posts. Yes, I do posts, right? But yeah, that's all the announcements that I, oh. Actually not. Yep, so I did my blood test the other day for those of you who subscribe to my channel, you guys know because I vlogged it. And they told me that it normally takes a week for the blood test to come through. So, you know, I'm all excited and I'm all anxious. Then I called my doc the other day and he says he hasn't received it and there's delays in the lab. <laughs> Made me so sad, guys. I mean, I was on a spike, but I'm going to give them until next week, Tuesday, because then that would make two weeks. Anxiety is really beating me bad right now, guys. I don't think y'all even understand. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, I really wanted to, you know, just get my process started, done and over with. Worse, I heard that that needle shot hurt. It probably won't, cause my, to me, because my pain tolerance is really, really high. But I don't know yet. I'd love to see. I just want to get it over with and, you know, get my shit started. But yeah, that was a little, um, that was a little disappointment for me. But it is what it is, I guess, because of the pandemic. Everything is delayed. Blood is delayed. Blood is delayed. <laughs> 
yeah so that's all the announcements that i had to make guys i'm just gonna run into my video now and uh, let you guys know how i know or how i knew and how i found out that i was a transgender yeah so let's get into that hey guys i know i've been locked up in my room so i decided to do my video today outside smell the fresh air <laughs> i know that you guys like when i'm outside well a couple of you have commented before and said you know you like the outside background but since i painted my room i've been in that all white you know kind of thing but i'm outside again first of all guys i like to point out that i didn't know that i was transgender right i don't think any of us knew from the beginning that we were right but eventually we came to the realization that whatever we were trying to be it's not who we really are and like i've told you guys in previous videos that it's never good to suppress who you want to be or who you are for the world fuck the world whoever the fuck you are they're gonna judge you no matter what so what like i always say might as well be myself right i didn't really know or anything like that um but when i was two years old uh my grandma my mom actually shipped me off to america to live with my grandmother in boston massachusetts rest in peace grace moses i'm gonna love you yeah she sent me off to live with my grandma and i remember i was in kindergarten you know i used to always think to myself that the girls were so pretty you know what i'm saying i would never look at the boys and be like oh my god you so cute <laughs> it was never like that for me i always used to admire you know the little girls that were in my age group and you know like hey, I'm shorty, yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying and at a younger age even at eight years old um i was kind of grown because my aunt and uncle were older and they used to involve me when they used to go out with their friends and everything like that so i grew up around the older kids i wasn't a dumbass kid at all i didn't know that messing with a girl was called lesbian or gay or whatever but i knew that you could mess with a girl <laughs> all right um and my aunt was used into that stuff i remember one time she sat down and she told me that her friends we're all dating girls and she think that she want to give it a try to see if she liked it so we had that short conversation even though i barely knew what the fuck she was talking about my uncle he used to watch wrestling all the time we used to play video games together we used to physically wrestle each other i was so much littler this nigga was crazy this nigga like i'm eight years old my nigga and he's giving me some body slams and y'all best believe i'm body slamming that nigga because the bed used to be so bouncing oh sh flat him out you know what i'm saying so yeah i was always a little tomboy but when um my grandma lost us to the system and i moved in with my foster mother like my real real foster mother i had two foster mothers the first one was a bitch you get me? The second one was a white lady. She was awesome. She took care of me. You know what I mean? She was amazing. Like, I knew that if I still lived in Boston, she would have approved of me. And I probably would have been transitioning already. Right? So, I mean, big up for herself. And I hope she's okay. But, I mean, upon living with her, I guess she realized how tomboyish that I was. And she used to always buy me, like, different clothes. I had the girl clothes, which I hated. But she used to also buy me the boy clothes, and I loved it. I loved it. I remember back in my time, they had those pants. Um, what do you call those those one piece pants that you could turn into shorts with the, the zip right here? You know, zip it off, and it's a shorts. Zip it back on, and it's a pants. Yeah, I love that shit. She bought me that shit, and my, my, my um and my button up shirts and all of that shit. You know, she took care of me, like, and she never questioned the situation. I think she just saw, and she gave me what I wanted. I remember that there was this Puerto Rican girl in my class. Like, she did not like me. I don't know what the issue was. But that day when my foster mother brought me to, you know, S-curl my hair, right? And I had on my little boy shirts and my button up. And I stepped in, Puerto Rican was looking at me like, I, papi. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then she started talking to me. I'm like, ooh, mommy, how you doing? I'm like, ooh, mamacita, <laughs> senorita. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean? 
I always had that feeling inside me, but I didn't know what it was. Finally, when I came back to Jamaica, there was an instance where, I mean, I didn't have any, that female part, you know, up here. I didn't start um, changing into that female puberty when I came to Jamaica, it was probably around 10. My dad used to always smoke as well, and I was fascinated by it. He used to let me walk around with my shirt off and he would never say anything. I bet you wish you did now, dad. Don't you? <laughs> I bet you wish you did. <laughs> right? He wouldn't say nothing about it. And because he didn't say anything about it, then I just kept doing it. I remember one time he rolled up my first blunt. <laughs> yeah, I was young, but you know, he saw that I was curious and I guess his thought was that best that I got it from him instead of somebody else, you know, so that I know, and to me, that's kind of smart. I guess most parents would be against that, but it's whatever. Every parent's different. Um, but anyways, he came outside, he gave me my little blunt, and I remember I climbed up on the wall, and I had my shirt off, guys, and I'm just up on the wall, like, you know, with my shirt off. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Right? And I didn't even know what I was smoking or if I was even smoking back then. He came outside, he looked, he smiled, he went back inside, came down off the wall. I think I was high as hell because I went to sleep. I was knocked the fuck out. But then there was this other instance where me and him went to Negro for a couple of days and there was this white girl like when i was in the grill the lady that we stayed with um she mostly had sons and i was so excited about that but the sons didn't live there why i was excited about that is because when i was with her i would wear her son's boy clothes that was there right and it just felt so freaking comfy it felt so real it felt right but i didn't know what it was it was this white girl that I met in the grill and she used to always come over because my dad friends own a bar, a restaurant, you know, a bar, a restaurant, a little motel. So she used to always come over, her and her dad, and we would sit and play and talk. And I remember she was going to leave and her dad came and he said to my dad, he was like, oh, you know, we leaving tomorrow and my daughter couldn't stop talking about your son. You know, she kept saying that, Daddy, we gotta um, go back over there so I can tell him bye, you know? And, you know, the man I tell my father, I say, yo, yeah, man, he had to do that for her because she wouldn't stop, right? So <laughs> my dad was like, oh, my son, because at that time, it was just one of his sons that was there at that time, one of my brothers, right? So he went for my little brother and he brought my little brother in front of the little girl and her dad, and her dad was like, no, not that one. She was like, no, no, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My dad was, my, her dad was like, no, not that one. My dad said, who? And he pointed at me playing over there on the stage because the lady had a little stage in her yard as well for performances. So my dad was like, oh, no, that's my daughter. <laughs> that's my daughter right there. <laughs> and he was like, for real? That's a girl? My father said, yeah, it's a girl, man. <laughs> you get me? Everybody was a laugh and it's funny. Now I take it serious once again. Lord of God. Right? So I was kind of embarrassed. I remember that feeling like when he told her that I was a girl and not a guy, I was so disappointed. I didn't know why I was disappointed. Right, but I just remember feeling like, you know, why did you do that, right? And depression, like, I don't even know how to explain depression at that age, guys, but it was tough, I felt it. Um, and that was probably dysphoria as well. <laughs> Hit me like a bomb, but I didn't even know what that was either. But she came over to me and she sat on the stage and she said to me, so all this time you've been a girl? I'm like, yeah, unfortunately, that is the case, right? And she was like, wow, and she stopped talking for a while. And I stopped talking, kind of feeling embarrassed, and she said, 
it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're a girl or not. I think you're really cute. I still like you, right? And, you know, she took my email. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, my dad's email, because I didn't have where I rasta. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Father streak them way. They wish email. Not even fun. <laughs> All right, so we took hers, but we lost the communication. But I never stopped thinking about that girl, because she was like... The first person to like see me if you guys understand like I believe that she really saw me and for her young age and everything she kind of sort of understood right and it made me feel good that she didn't care you know another thing is that you used to have this um, show on CVM or TVJ um, a lot of people might be shocked about this but it used to come on late at night right no fun of where did young like me probably didn't have no bed, right? But I have insomnia, so I don't really sleep like that. So when my parents are curled up sleeping, um, I'm in front of the TV. So one night I'm in front of the TV, and I see this series come on called The L Word, right? And I'm just sitting there looking, and you have this character called Shane, right? And at one Shane is a lesbian, right? Or a stud. Shane might be a stud. Right, um, but you have this character called Shane, and I thought that Shane was really dope. I was like, whoa! And Shane had all the ladies, all the ladies. They had this little chart in the series, and you know, I'm like, damn. I remember feeling like, damn, that's what I want to be. That's, that's. I mean, I don't like guys. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I'd like to do. But then, um, when I got a little bit older, up in my teenage years, I'm bring L word. Um, I watched it again, and then there was this other character called Max. Now, Max was a F to M. Max is a transgender. Max is the person that gave me the idea to bind, but I only started binding like two years ago. Just the fact that, you know, I had that image of Max in my head still, right? But Max was the first transgender that I laid eyes on, on TV, on a series, on a picture everything like that and I saw how Max struggled but I still didn't really understand it going through high school and everything like that um, I tried to fit in you know I tried to give my family and my friends as well people around me what I thought was right you know and what I thought that would make them happy instead of what made me really happy so I was always doing what everybody wanted and you know every girl was dating boys but my, <laughs> the boys that I used to date, I'm going to be honest. And if y'all are subscribed to my channel, y'all were like my bitches. Like, no joke. Right? It was, in a sense, it still felt like I was the guy in the relationship. Because I remember storming in to one of these dudes' classroom because he was talking shit about me. And I draped that nigga up. I said, nigga, what you say? What did you say, boy? Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> right? But, yeah, that was, a, as I said, it was never like they were, you know, it was a relationship or whatever. I never felt anything towards any of them. And some of them may think differently because I just knew how to play it off. But the truth is, none of y'all really knew me at all. And I want y'all to get that straight. During high school, it was really tough. I'm already going through puberty now, you know, and... I thought that, you know, what I was doing and trying to fit in um, was the right way or the best way to go about it so I didn't inconvenience anybody, right? But as I touched the ninth grade, I started to get a lot more in tune with myself. Um, by that time, I, I think the first thing that I did, actually, because I was dating girls in the ninth grade, I came out as a lesbian back then as gay and had a few yeah. girlfriends in yeah. high school yeah. so um all of my friends knew yeah. by the time i hit ninth grade i was done with boys and boyfriends and pleasing people and, you know doing what society says that young girls should do right i was done and over with that so yeah um in the 10th grade the first thing i did was cut my hair when i came back to school right i have my little fade still had my little cream hair because yeah i had cream hair because of my mom so a little piece of that cream hair was just to the side and 
you know I had one of them boy cuts around at the back short yep then I had my first fet and I decided to go all out about it I showed up in a yellow pants red button-up shirt and yellow tie yo I was swagging in my white Reeboks and um the girls were just like whoa you know and I felt so great everybody was like yo Glenn you look great you look yo right now yeah you're looking better than the dudes right now for real and that made me feel great while you little boys and you little girls were running around dating each other you know i was dating a teacher from another school right <laughs> right that's that's the level that i was at by the time i was in 10th grade but i was always thuggish guys that's what i'm trying to get to you i was always thuggish and tomboyish and I never liked guys, and that's just what it was. You get what I'm saying? It was just a phase. It was just a show. It was just a put on for people, so you know, so that I could please society. And after a while, I just stopped doing that. My mom called it. Well, my teachers and my mom said that I was being rebellious. You know, because they they knew me as that smart, innocent girl that they wanted me to be, right? Um, all of my friends that know me know that I had that thuggish thing about me a long time ago, right? I was never into that stud for stud shit, or I was never that kind of person that would date a butch. Um, by the time I finished um, high school, I recognized as a butch, right? Because to me, um, at that time, that was the most suitable name, you know, the most thing that seemed a lot more masculine to me right being a lesbian was just too feminine i had to move up from that <laughs> right so i identified myself as a butch right and after a while i met females who told me that you know i'm a different kind of butch because they've met butch who wouldn't even take off their clothes in bed and i'm just that kind of person i'm not skin to skin kind of person you know i feel like that's how we get the connection yeah, so a lot of females told me that, you know, I was different when it came on to sex and bed and everything like that. And a lot of butchers don't do that. They don't even take off their sports bra or anything like that, right? So as time progressed, I still didn't know that I was transgender, guys. At this point, I remember even the other day me and Danny was talking um, probably a year ago or a year and a half ago or probably two, right? Danny came to link me and Danny, me and Danny was talking and Danny said to me that, you know, she started telling me about one of our friends who was transitioning, right? And I was like, wow, really? You know, that knowledge of trans just came back to me again, you know, different from Max and all of that. Because to be honest, guys, I did see other YouTubers when I got older, other transgender, I was looking into it, but then... It's like my dream died because I'm like, I'm never gonna get this shit living in this country, right? So I just completely forgot about it and I decided to just be myself, the masculine me, right? And people can say whatever they wanna label me as, it doesn't care because I know who I am, kinda, <laughs> right? So Nani told me that one of our friends was transitioning and then there it goes again, it popped up again. And me and Danny was talking and Danny said to me, Sage, like, I see how you move and everything like that, but I've never seen you as the type to transition or, you know, want to be a man. And when she said that, I mean, I didn't really know how to feel. I mean, I said to her, you know, yeah, I agree because I'm not really care what society think about me. I know who I am. I know what kind of person I am. I know what I like. I know what I dislike. Right. So I said to her, me changing, I guess, is not necessary. And I mean, I don't know where I'm gonna even get started with that, right? And our friend that was changing lived far away, so, and I wasn't gonna get there. In my head, I'm thinking that he was transitioning within that area, right? And I lived all the way in Kingston. Yeah, but I really felt that when Danny said that to me, right? Because the truth was deep down is that if I really had the chance if I, there was the opportunity, it was right there in front of me, I knew where to go and what to do, I probably would have started a long time ago. I would say to people that, you know, I don't think that I'm a butch, um, I don't think that I'm a stud because there are certain things that studs do that I, I'm not into, 
and there are certain things that butches do that I'm not into, right? So, I mean, there it came to a point where I was saying that, to be honest, um, at this point, I don't know where I fit in. And that kind of made me feel depressed as well, in a way, guys. I started to feel like, okay, where do I fit in then? If I'm not a stud, I'm not a lesbian, I'm not a butch, then I'm not stand, <laughs> then where do I fit in, right? And then, of course, you know, Liam popped up and, you know, Liam gave me a lot more insight. And the Liam that I used to know, the person that I knew when we were growing up, I mean, this nigga standing in front of me <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, wow, wow. You really, really change, bro. But I'ma feel like emotional, guys. Oh, of course. Yeah, I'm looking at him like you really, really change, bro. And you know, I was so happy for him, so proud of him. I could see that, you know, he finally found himself. You get me? I could see that he was a lot more happier than you know back then when whatever we used to call ourselves, <laughs> right? Um, and I could see the difference in his voice and his features and. I was just looking at him like, wow, wow, like, you know, and him start tell me and educate me on where I'm doing thing, and then I met Tony and Tiana, and you know, I see where Tony is in his progress, and you guys know that Tony did an interview for me on my channel as well, and I got a lot more insight from that, but meeting these two people. You see me? Yeah, because it's like I met Liam all over again. A whole new person. I'm getting to know a whole new guy. So meeting these two people, you see me, kind of gave me hope, confidence, courage. You see me? It brought a lot of happiness to me. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Woo, Glenn, you a man. Stop crying, bro. Woo, don't cry. <laughs> yeah. So, it was like I had a. It was like. You guys are my people, right? I can, I can. I can be emotional with you guys, right? All right, so. It was like a, a next level. It's like, it's like something just jumped out. It was like a, a, a breakthrough. You know what I'm saying, guys? Like, I didn't know what the feeling was, like, all the time. I used to, like, look at my body parts and try, just try to accept it. I learned to, to love it. And at this point, I still don't love some of my body parts 100%, but because of where I was in life and how society was and what I was afraid of, you know, what people would say, family, friends, you know, enemies, everybody. It was like, you know, I just got used to it. I got comfortable, you know, with my body type, right? And I never knew what it was when I felt, you know, walking on the road and niggas are seeing me, I called to me, yo, when I disrespectful, by the way, uh, some body boy. But moving on, <laughs> niggas calling to me, that feeling, it used to make me feel so weird. Looking at me, I'd say things like stiff breasts, slimmers, browning, all of that shit just made me feel so, it made me feel weak, you get what I'm saying? It, it just didn't feel like me. It made me, it made me so angry, guys. You get what I'm saying? And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what those feelings were until I dug deeper. Isn't me? And that's after I met back Liam 
And then I met Tony and I started digging deeper into my research. I started watching other trans men on YouTube as well, right? And I could relate so much. It just felt like, yes, yes, this is what I've been freaking looking for. Oh my God, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. I found it. <laughs> I found myself. You know what I'm saying? And that was just, it felt like a really good feeling. Like everything that they said is everything that I could relate to. Isn't you know me? And at one point, I'm like, shit, I'm fucking 24. Like, it might be too late. But then, you know, I came across Kevin. And it's like, you guys showed me, like, respect to you guys. Tony, Kevin, Liam, isn't you know me? And all the other trans men that I've met on my journey. Big up on yourself. You guys have. <sighs> Can't get emotional again, guys. Cut, cut. You guys have really been a big inspiration to my life. Um, I want you guys to, to know that, that I really appreciate you guys, that the support and love that you guys have been giving me since I started my journey, I haven't 100% started as yet, but yeah, since I figured out that this is me and this is what I want to do, you know, like, I've always felt like I've, I'm more than a man than most of you motherfucking niggas in, in Jamaica. Right? And possibly in this world, because, you know, I haven't gotten a chance to interact with other men. And the men in Jamaica, those, una illiterate, bad. And I tell no, like the mass majority, I'm not disrespecting all of y'all, because some of you know I'm a real G. No joke, no one itself. But the mass majority, y'all is real illiterate. Y'all is really in a motherfucking box. And y'all need to come out of that. Right? Since I started this, though, a lot of people have been telling me that I am so brave you know, to be living in Jamaica and going through with this. And I'm, I told them this, and I'm telling you guys this now. I feel no fear. Like, I've seen fear. I felt fear. And I've been in the darkest places in my life, just coming up on my journey of just being gay. You get me? There is nothing that you guys can scare me not to do with my life anymore. Because a one life my offer live. I'm a now I'm gonna control it. Not anymore. All of that over. <laughs> it's all over guys. So yeah, really and truly I just figured out that I am a transgender since last year. Right? And nothing wrong with that. Right? I didn't know. Right? It was a lot of it was a lot to take in. You get what I'm saying? Um, there were little hint, hints of it, but I didn't know what it was. As I said, me meeting the people that I met last year, you guys really helped me to figure it out. You see me? And mega always appreciate you know, mega always support you know, just the same way you want to support me. All right? So, yeah, guys, I'm a trans man. I'm a transgender, born as a female, born physically as a female, that's what society says, right? I, I don't, I've never ever felt like I should have been a female, ever. I've never felt in tune to my feminine side in any way. I tried, I really did try, and those were the hardest days for me. As the years progressed, I figured it out, and I'm so fucking happy. I'm not even gonna know how happy I am. I can't wait to start my transition for real, real, real. And you know, I'm ready. I am ready. I am. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's it, guys. Yeah, that's all I gotta say, guys. Once again, I'm 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 so happy um, to finally figure it out. To finally know. To finally find. To, to know that I finally found my place in life. Yeah, this is definitely my place. This is where I feel comfortable. Yeah, like a man. The man I should have been years ago. Is it me, but we can't, we can't say that, guys. Everything happens in time, I guess, right? I don't regret where I'm coming from. I don't regret the things that I did in my past. I don't regret um, 
the things that brought me to the realization of life is me. I don't regret anything about my past. I'm not ashamed of anything about my past either. Is it me? And I think that's the best thing and the best breakthrough for me so that I can move through freely in my new life as a man. Right? So, yeah. I give thanks to my life before, right? Because it made me the strong person that I am today. Right? And it made me mentally and physically ready for my transition that's coming soon. Right? So, that's it for my video, guys. Um, that's all I had to say. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry that I cried like a bitch a while ago, but I couldn't hold it back. But yeah, that's it, isn't it? Me, I gotta go inside. I know, me not sleep, and I gotta wake up at 3 a.m. tomorrow for work. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. You don't know I'm Glenn, and I'll be back again with another video for you guys. Peace.